Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. We are continuing this big, big week for showcases. It's just day after day and game after game. It's really just such a great time to be a gamer. But of course, yesterday we did have both a Nintendo Direct as well as a PlayStation State of Play, which I did cover both of those, so do make sure to watch those videos in case you didn't miss out on any of that. But now today, it's Xbox's turn. They themselves did have an indie showcase today where they talked about several independent games and then yes, some more Xbox Game Pass games. That's not quite all though because a big Xbox game did leak out on their storefront and, and I know you all are going to absolutely love this. So yes, there's a lot of exciting stuff to go over today. Per usual though, if you do find yourself enjoying the video, hit those buttons below. We are on the road to 50,000 subscribers, so join our little community here. We love gaming on this channel, so if you do as well, hit those buttons below. Let's just go and jump right into the video though, starting off with that Tales of Symphonia remaster, if you can really call it that. See, what's happening here is that this quote-unquote remaster was announced at yesterday's Nintendo Direct, and what should be a really exciting announcement quickly became a major disappointment. That's because for whatever reason, Bandai Namco is apparently just allergic to the GameCube version of this game. Instead, they decided to remaster the PlayStation 2 version, which does have more content, which I, I guess that's a good thing, but the problem here is that the PlayStation 2 version was hard-coded at 30 frames per second. That means that the remaster for all versions of this game, including Xbox, PlayStation, and the Nintendo Switch, also, yes, runs at 30 frames per second. So in other words, the GameCube version that released way back in 2003 technically runs better than these modern platforms, as that version does run at 60 frames per second. Now, I mean, the remaster will have better resolution at 1080p, unless you're playing in handheld mode for the Switch, which then will run at 720p, but this is actually just a baffling decision in my opinion. In the year of 2022, it's pretty evident by this point on how important 60 frames per second really is. And, and considering the GameCube version has 60 frames and has had that for, what is this now, 17, 19 years by this point, why not just remaster that version? I mean, maybe that's just me, but I, I really don't know if that extra content was worth crippling this so-called remaster. But, I mean, I, I guess it is what it is. This is a budget title, but just kind of let me know what's more important to you, that extra content in the PlayStation 2 version or 60 frames in the GameCube version. Let me know your thoughts below. Let's just go and get to the Xbox news, though. There is a lot to go over here as they did have a two-hour-long ID at Xbox showcase. Yeah, they, they, they lied to us here. I, I believe they told us it was going to be 90 minutes and... Truthfully, even that would have been far too long. The pacing, once again, was really bad. I, I was hoping that because it was a condensed showcase, they would do a better job with that. But no, they, they, they really didn't. It, it was mostly developers talking about their games, Twitch streamers playing said games, and then some occasional trailer drops. I mean, on one side, I do understand what they're trying to do here. They're trying to give these developers their time in the spotlight, but I feel like there has to be a better way to do it than this that would also be enjoyable for the viewers. In my opinion, I just don't feel like the way they're doing it now respects their viewers' time. But hey, that's why you all have me. I can sit through all this and then just kind of give you all the highlights, and that's what I'm going to do today. They did talk about 20 different games at this show, 11 of which are Xbox Game Pass titles. So the 11 Xbox Game Pass titles that they talked about include Evil, Homestead Arcana, The Walking Dead Final Season, Rainbow Billy, Moon Scars, The Big Con, Metal Hellsinger, You Suck at Parking, Amazing Cultivation Simulator, Turnip Boy Robs a Bank, and then the big one here being Valheim. Now, we've recently talked about both Metal Hellsinger and You Suck at Parking, so I'm not really going to go too much over those today, but what I will say is that with Metal Hellsinger, that game legitimately looks very good, especially if you like Doom. It does mix in that Doom-like gameplay with a rhythm game, and while that seems like an odd combination, it, it does look really good, and if either one of those intrigue you even slightly, it does release tomorrow, and reviews have mostly been positive for this game, so definitely go check out Metal Hellsinger when it releases. As for the new and upcoming games, though, there's actually a few games here that I, I thought really stood out. The first of which is, yes, 
Valheim. This is a game that's been available on PC for a while, and it was actually one of the most popular games that released last year. It was just kind of this surprise hit that blew up over on Steam, and now it's going to get another chance to expand even further with it coming over to PC Game Pass on September 29th. You just have to love it. And if you're a subscriber and have yet to play this game, well now, you can see for yourself on why so many people enjoy this game. In fact, if you look at the user reviews, it still has an overwhelmingly positive user score with 95% of everybody recommending this game. Yeah, Valheim might blow up online all over again with that Game Pass release. Now, as for consoles, Valheim is also planned to come over to the Xbox Series and Xbox Game Pass in early 2023, so do keep that in mind as well. Now, the next one here that caught my attention is Turnip Boy Robs a Bank. This is another day one release, and I mean, you know, there's already Turnip Boy commits tax evasion, so I guess he's upping his criminal background here. But in this case, it is a wacky dual stick shooter. These type of games do have a tendency of being pretty fun, and if you like Turnip Boy's first game, you might want to go and keep an eye on this one when it releases in the Game Pass in 2023. If anything, it's got a good sense of humor, and I think that it will tie in well with its gameplay. Another upcoming day one release that I think looks really interesting is Moonscars. Now, we've seen this game before, but it does release later this month on September 27th. It does seem like this month is shaping up quite well, and it continues to look really good if you like those non-linear 2D action games. We've kind of seen these type of games explode here in recent years, and Moonscar might very well be the next standout hit in this genre. It's currently being described as this Souls-like experience, and as you can clearly see, it has this dark, grotesque world that really pops with its atmospheric art style. I think this one definitely is worth paying attention to at the very least, and could be a surprise hit when it releases again later this month on September 27th. Again, directly into Xbox Game Pass. There's just far too many of these interesting games to keep up with by this point. Speaking of that, if you like Farming Sims, another one of those was announced today. Homestead Arcana is launching into Game Pass sometime in 2023. Now, admittedly, I'm not really big into these type of games myself, but if you are, I wanted to go ahead and at the very least, highlight it for you. It does mix that magical adventure with a farming sim, and with these type of games, you can just sink countless, and I mean countless hours into them. So with that, I think this is a good Game Pass inclusion that will satisfy certain fans out there. I think the only problem for this game is that there's just so many of these farming sims coming out within the next 12 months. So, so this game will have pretty steep competition. Those there were my main day one highlights though, but I mean, there, there's some other nice inclusions here as well. Skybound Games did announce their Game Pass partnership with four new titles. You do have that final season of The Walking Dead. Those are beloved games from the Telltale series, and, and I think both The Big Con and Rainbow Billy, I think those games look pretty interesting as well. I do like their art style, and with The Big Con specifically, that game is based on the 90s, and I am a 90s kid after all, so that game does intrigue me personally. As for Rainbow Billy, it is a 2.5D puzzle platformer, and it does have pretty good reviews with an 80 overall score on Metacritic, so don't sleep on these games either. They are heading over to Game Pass later this year. As always though, it's just good to be an Xbox Game Pass subscriber. Now, one last game that I want to talk about that was at this showcase though, is Born of Bread. Now, this is not a Game Pass title, but I think this game just looks absolutely fantastic, especially for fans of the classic Paper Mario series. As we all know, Nintendo, they kind of refuse to go back to that classic formula for whatever reason, but indie developers, they have kind of picked up that mantle here in recent years. We saw that with Bug Fables, which is an absolutely amazing game in my opinion. Definitely go check that game out. But now, here we also have Born of Bread. It's a very charming title that tries to capture that nostalgic formula and certainly, I think that it looks really good. I think the combat with those interactive elements looks like a lot of fun. And then also, it's exploration. You do interact with the environment in unique and special ways to kind of solve various puzzles. And I mean, if there was any game at this showcase that really grabbed me, Born of Bread is definitely the one. This game, I do think, looks really, really good. 
Overall, though, there you have it. And like I said before, I think there's definitely some interesting games at the showcase. But let's just go and go over a small list here of some of the other games that was shown. Call of the Wild, the Angler was revealed. This is a fishing style of game. Then you have Spider Hack that's actually releasing later this month on September 22nd and is like this platforming arcade style of game. Song of Iron, that game is actually getting a sequel. So if you like that first game, definitely check that one out. Shoulders of Giants. I actually thought this one looked relatively interesting interesting you have like these frogs on these like mecha machines and and you go around fighting things in the world it looked it looked pretty interesting ghostbusters spirits unleashed that got some new gameplay and then there was inglets as well as let's cook together so they did have a lot to reveal at the id at xbox showcase i just hope eventually they start to figure things out and maybe pace these events better that way it's a better viewing experience for you know of course the viewers now, we do also have one other big thing happening in Xbox land, and that is for the often speculated Deathloop. Now, Deathloop was one of the highest rated games that released last year in 2021, but this game has found itself in a, a bit of a weird predicament. So this game technically is owned by Xbox because they acquired Bethesda, but before that acquisition was actually made, Sony, well, they signed a deal to make Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo one-year timed exclusives for the PlayStation 5. However, today is the final day of that Deathloop deal, so everybody's been kind of wondering on whether or not it will release on Xbox this month in September. Well, they've yet to make that official announcement, but interestingly enough, it has surfaced on the Xbox Store today. You can't purchase it quite yet, but the fact that this is popping up for some fans out there on the exact same day that that one year timed exclusivity ends, yeah, that's a pretty good indication that an official announcement will be made sooner rather than later. If I were to guess myself, it could possibly be announced tomorrow at their TGS showcase. Now, there's no guarantee on any of that, but they are teasing Game Pass announcements to be there, and this would be just a huge announcement to make that would really get a lot of fans excited. That is the other question about all this, though. Will this game actually be an Xbox Game Pass title? Now, my guess would be that, yes, it will be, because, again, this is owned by Xbox. But really, that just all kind of depends on what type of agreement Bethesda made with PlayStation. We have seen Sony block Game Pass games before, and they could have done something similar here with Deathloop. We can't exactly rule that out. And we do know that this game is also releasing into PlayStation Plus on September 20th. So, I mean, there's still no guarantee on any of that. But one thing's for sure, that announcement should be made sometime relatively soon, and I will let you all know as soon as that happens. Either way, Deathloop is an excellent game for those that have yet to play it themselves. Now, speaking of TGS, RGG just had their live stream where they announced not one, but two new Yakuza games. This is in addition to Like a Dragon Ishin, which they announced just yesterday at PlayStation State of Play. We already talked about that, but in an unexpected turn of events, that means three new Yakuza games are on the way. So for fans of this franchise like myself, you're having a pretty good day. I, I do like what they're doing though, because while this might feel like a little bit of an overload, all three of these games are quite a bit different. So as we talked about yesterday, Ishin is a game set in a completely different time era where you play in an alternate Kyoto. So that does change everything from atmosphere, which is very important for this franchise, to even gameplay where you can use swords and revolvers. As for these other two games, though, they announced Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, and then Yakuza Like a Dragon 8. So with the man who erased his name, the protagonist once again will be Kiryu, and it has that classic beat-em-up gameplay. That's the reason I, I specifically like what they're doing here, because if you weren't really a fan of their latest entry, instead focusing on turn-based gameplay and a different cast of characters, then this one here will be the one for you. It will feel more like those first six games. The story though is set between Yakuza 6 and 7, and they are describing it as a side story preparing fans for Yakuza 8. And you'll kind of understand why here in just a second, but it will release in 2023. As for Yakuza 8, this will continue the mainline entries with that turn-based gameplay instead. Now, what's interesting about this one, though, is that much like Yakuza 0, you'll have dual protagonist, but this time with Ichiban and then an older, more mature Kiryu. So yes, Kiryu is back, though this game is still a little further out with a 2024 release window. They are also saying that this is their largest game to date, so all in all, fun times ahead for Yakuza fans out there. 
Let's go take a look at the poll of the day, though, where I asked you all, do you ever buy limited or special edition controllers despite not really needing it? And as you can see here, most of you all do not, with 77% of you saying no, while 20% of you said yes. Now, that would mean that one out of every five people do purchase some of these special controllers, which makes me feel a bit better about myself because I am very much a part of that group. I do actually have several of these controllers. I am a little bit of a collector, and some of these controllers just look so good in my opinion. But I have here recently tried to contain myself a little more because it's becoming rather clear. They're just making so many of these controllers by this point. It's, you know, they, they are quite a bit expensive, especially when you start to put them all together. I think Nexus of Ice in the comments, though, kind of fills me here. As Nexus said, I have far too many limited edition controllers. I will not give a count, but it is embarrassingly high. Now, I don't know if I'm quite at that embarrassingly high count, but I do have several of these controllers, admittedly. But nonetheless, most of you all don't buy into these controllers, so a lot of you all are saving quite a bit of money skipping out on all of those. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode. But if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.